my homily for the most holy body and blood of Christ, the 2nd of June, 2024. Our first reading today gives us the background to why we speak of blood at Mass. Ancient peoples regarded blood as something special, the life force of the living. And still today, Jews and Muslims kill animals in a certain way. Sacrifices of animals were made by the Jews and their blood was then used in making a solemn covenant with God. Jesus himself built on this belief, but made himself the sacrifice, and his blood was what made a solemn covenant with God. His blood, in the words of the letter to the Hebrews, won an eternal redemption for us, much more effectively than the blood of animals. For Jesus is the perfect sacrifice to God. He purifies us, cancels out our sins, and makes a new covenant with us. Just reflect on what God did for us in Jesus. Through him, we are purified, healed, restored, forgiven. What more could we ask? The most memorable teaching usually builds on what went before. And so Jesus built on his Jewish faith and culture. Our gospel speaks of the Passover, when the Jews sacrificed the lamb and spread its blood on their doorposts, thus saving them from death and then freeing them from slavery in Egypt. It's one of the great feasts of Judaism. But we have moved on from a lamb and its blood to the Lamb of God, Jesus, and his blood that freed us from slavery to sin and leads us to new life. We don't need to sacrifice animals anymore. The one necessary and effective sacrifice has been made, that of Jesus, the Son of God. And we don't need the blood of animals, for Jesus himself has shed his own blood to take away our sins and make a new covenant between God and ourselves. At the Last Supper, the first Mass, Jesus gave us a memorial of what he has done for us using simple bread and wine, everyday things available in every country, he gave us his body and blood. Through the actions of the priest at Mass, he still changed his bread and wine into his body and blood. On the cross, he gave himself up for us, and today he still gives himself up for us in the form of bread and wine, which becomes our holy communion, bringing us close to our God. In Medjugorje recently, I was very struck by the great reverence with which many people received the Eucharist. Perhaps we take it for granted. The key words before we receive are, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The Eucharist Holy Communion is always a gift, never a right. And it is not about us, but about Jesus, our Lord and Saviour, on whose healing power we depend.